Welcome everyone. Um, my name is Kathleen Kelly and I'm one of the managing directors at PSI. Um, thank you all for taking the time out of your Wednesday morning to, to join us here. So our goal in hosting this follow-up session is to further the discussion inspired by Dr. Pargament's presentation. As an institute so named Psychotherapy and Spirituality, um, we accept Dr. Pargament's challenge to raise above a whisper the role of spirituality in healing. We hope to accomplish this today through a brief sketch of the role of spirituality in people's lives. Um, and then we'll hear a case presentation from Mary Reagan. Um, but most importantly, and I think the richest part of this time we'll spend together today will be a dialogue amongst ourselves. Dr. Pargamon and his co one of his co-researchers, Annette Mahoney at Bowling Green, defined spirituality as a search for the sacred, placing the sacred at the heart and soul of spirituality. For many, the sacred is well-defined and synonymous. Um, just refer to a construct that he has in his book, um, Spiritually Integrated Psychotherapy, where he puts at this sacred core um, um, images or constructs, God, divine, higher power, transcendent. And then there's the sacred ring. So that um, uh, the definition of sacred can include religious language or religiousness, but it's not necessary. Other aspects of life can take on divine character. So the sacred core refers to ideas of God, higher powers, divinity, transcendent reality, but the sacred is not restricted. Surrounding the sacred core is a ring of other aspects of life that become extraordinary, indeed sacred in themselves through their association with the sacred core. Finding out what is meant by these terms becomes sort of tricky, but also very, very exciting. The other shift in, in my brain was, I don't have to come to this work with an understanding. I just have to come to this work with a curiosity. It's not my job to define what is sacred for those I'm working with. It's not my job to define spirituality. My job is to listen for that um, in others and to help uh, or assist them in, in defining it for themselves. Yeah, and I appreciate how Pargament was intentional in his illustration and that the pathways are both vertical and horizontal. And so the relationships amongst those in the 12-step group you know, it may be, they work like that and eventually lead and, and also flow from the higher, higher power. Mm -hmm. Yeah, just to say a quick word, and I'm way oversimplifying it, but again, using a pargament construct, you know, discovery is that, that stage, you know, our early stages of where we, we may have been raised in a religious family or we pick up ideas or concepts of, of God of other otherness. The conservation stage is where we we kind of conserve, um, um, we conserve, we, we rely on on what we have learned about the ways of, of the world to sustain us until they don't work any longer. And that's where we start to, spirituality starts to um, bump up against human limitations. When we hit those limitations, we often will go into a period of struggle where our old constructs may no longer work. And this is where I think we, we meet a lot of folks in, in treatment is in that struggle and they can get stuck in struggle. Sounds like for you, the 12 step program gave you a, um, gave you a way, it gave you a, a path for coming out of that struggle and yeah. into transformation. Yeah. And there, so there are, Again, using Pargamon's language, there are thousands of pathways to the sacred. There are thousands of pathways to the transformation. I don't have to sit in a room knowing all of those are. I have to listen for what my, my client or whoever it is that I'm working with, I have to listen for what pathways on they, are, the, are they on. And are those pathways working or not working? Are they destructive? Addiction is a, it is a destructive pathway to otherness. Thank you all. Thank you.